Hello, thanks. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Robert Carter, and I'll be taking you to uh, faith class today. We've been teaching on faith for a few weeks here. And what we try to do is every Saturday is give you more and more about faith. We look at it from all different angles and all different scriptures. Today what we want to look at is the same spirit of faith. And that's, uh, we pulled that out of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. It's a very interesting chapter in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. That 13th verse, it says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according that to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all your goodness and all your mercy. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give us more light, open our eyes so that we can see, and open our hearts so that we can understand what you're saying to us to here today, and, and give us the wisdom that we need to walk by faith and not by sight, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, in 2 Corinthians, that chapter talks about the light of Christ's gospel. You know how we like to do it. We like to go up and see what that chapter was talking about and work our way down to the verse 13, which it is talking about the same spirit of faith. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. That's Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And he's talking about the ministry that they have is to preach the gospel, right? Amen. To everybody, and they say they do not lose heart because they have received mercy. And we should look at that the same way. You know, just have we have received mercy from God, we shouldn't lose heart either. Amen. But we have renowned the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestations of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And then he says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. But it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that light. And you know, when you really start walking in this world, you've been walking in this world a long time, and then when you become a, a saint, when you, you know, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that he died for your sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. And you believe that in your heart, and you confess that in your mouth, you're saved. This is what Jesus was talking about when he came talking about repent and believe the, the gospel. For the kingdom of 
God is at hand. We're talking the same thing today. And when you look around the world, a lot of people are perishing. It could be any age group. It's no certain age group. And Paul is writing here, they're perishing. It says, but even if our gospel is veiled or hid, it is hid from those who are perishing. So this gospel is hid from those who are perishing. And then he writes on, whose mind the God of this age has blinded. This, this God of this age he's talked about is Satan. Amen. Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. This Jesus talks about the light. And um, John, turn with me to John, the 12th chapter. In John, the 12th chapter, around the 27th verse, Jesus predicts his death on the cross. And when you look down do here, verse that I want you to uh, pay attention to, what we all should pay attention to. Well, we can start at 34. It says, the people answered him, we have heard from the law that Christ remains forever. And how can you say the son of man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus is the Son of Man. This is what they were talking about, that if Jesus is lifted up on the cross, he will draw all man unto him, right? That's what this whole, chap this whole um, passage is talking about here. Um, and then it says, Then Jesus said to them, a little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. And we have so many people walking in darkness today, and they really don't know where they're going. They're like cattle going into the pasture. They're just following the herd. It says, while you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become the sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. We know about all the signs and miracles that are written in the four gospel accounts that Jesus done. A lot of them, right? Yes. Raised us. It is not the dead. Right. Not made the this earth lame right man walk. Mm -hmm. Made a blind man see. All, all them things that we talk about in the gospel accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though we know about them, and people have told us about them, a lot of us do not believe. And then it says that the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled which was spoken. It says, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their heart, and turn so that I might heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw the glory, saw his glory, and spoke of him. And then it goes on down through there, and it tells us to walk in the light. We have to stay in the light. We don't want to be in no darkness, because we don't know where we're going. we got to stay in the light. 
And Jesus, uh, when you jump down here to the 44th verse, it says, Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but him who sent me. And he who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. That is, that is revelation there. Um, and if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Amen. That's what I came. came to save the world. Amen. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Jesus only was speaking what the Father told him. Amen. He wasn't speaking nothing, you know, on his own. And we should, as Christians, <laughs> not do that ourselves be saying something that God hasn't said. Amen. This is why we give you a lot of scriptures. Now when you go back to 2 Corinthians the 4th chapter God is so, you know, we are really blessed to have these holy scriptures yes, we are. because this is a uh, um, a key to telling you how to live this Christian life on earth. Amen. And it warns you about what you shouldn't do. And it tells you what you should do. And here's, this is a big one that we're talking about today. They're talking about the same spirit of faith. And it says in that 13th verse, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Now Jesus said he was only speaking what he heard the Father say, right? That's right. So if we believe what Jesus said, we should be only speaking what Jesus is saying. That's right. Now let's go up to that seventh verse in that fourth chapter, Second Corinthians fourth chapter, starting at the seventh verse. It says, um, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We all are in earthly vessels. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Is that true today? Okay. If you're walking this Christian walk, you are hard pressed on every side. You got people coming against you all different kind of ways. But he said, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We can't let nobody get you down. Right. You know, this is something that I learned more and more about this Christian walk, and, and you know, and um, we was talking about last week, stand fast in our in the faith, and this week we're talking about the same spirit of faith. This spirit of faith we're talking about, you have to stand fast in what God has told you, Amen. not what everybody else is saying. You can't get into despair. It says persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Always caring about in the the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. For we have lived, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, 
that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal bodies, so then death is working in us, but life in you. This is Paul talking about himself, you know, by him being an apostle. They were always, everywhere he went, there was a revival and also <laughs> a rebellion. And most places he taught, if you go through the book of Acts. So he went through all this. And then it says, And since we had the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. So also believe and therefore we therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up Jesus, Je he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will pre present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So it's very important what's coming out of your mouth. This is what this whole message is about today. What is what are you speaking? Now in um, Acts is the book of Acts writes something here. In Acts the 15th chapter 11 verse it says but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Do we believe that? Do we believe that we should be saved in the same manner as they? They're talking about the Jewish people, how they were saved. Because that's what that whole chapter was about in Acts the 15th chapter. Uh, was about, it, here's how it starts in the first verse of that 15th chapter. It says, And certain men came down from Judea and taught, the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. A lot of people get caught up in that of rules and regulations and policies and procedures and doctrines and traditions that many denominations have. And they say, unless you do these things, you cannot be saved. Amen? Amen. And this is what the whole thing was about in the 15th chapter. They went up to Jerusalem to the brother to discuss this. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I said, in the 11th verse, it said, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Amen. That's the whole thing. We are saved through the same way that everybody else is saved, the same manner. That's, you can go to Romans, the 10th chapter, which is a, a very good chapter for letting you know how people became saved. It actually gives you, it tells you what to do. <laughs> Amen. If you don't know what to do, in John the third chapter, Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. That's the only way. And here, in, um, these are very, uh, this is a very uh, good verses here. It says, starting at the sixth verse, but the righteousness of faith speaks on in this way. Do not say in your heart who shall ascend up to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who should descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which... We preach. It's a word of faith. Amen. And then it tells you 
that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see how easy that is? For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then in the 17th verse of that 10th chapter it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So that's how you get more faith, by hearing. Hearing the word of God. You know, the disciples asked Jesus, told Jesus to increase their faith. And see, this is a revelation. This should be, what I'm going to say here. The way, if you want more faith, faith comes by hearing. That's the only way it comes. Mm -hmm. That I can see in the Bible, according to the scriptures. And then over here, it's 2 Corinthians, what we're talking about, is what we're saying. Amen? Amen. He said, I believe and therefore I speak. So what we're believing, are we speaking what we're believing? We also believe and therefore we speak. So we're supposed to, the same spirit that the early church had, all them people, that same spirit, right? The same spirit that Jesus had, right? Amen. We're supposed to be speaking what God is telling us to speak. We're not supposed to be speaking on our own authority or our own doctrine or our own traditions, right? Now, in the book of Numbers, it really is important on what you believe. Because what you believe can determine life or death. Now, in the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter, God had told them to send these spies into the promised land. Numbers the thirteenth chapter. Pastor. Yeah. When you say that's why it's important to pray in tongues, uh, the spirit be praying. Uh, well, it's not you praying, but the spirit. I, said, I just said the spirit. Be right. Praying. When you pray in tongues, and that all. Because it says we don't even know what we need to pray for. As we ought to pray. Yeah, That's what spirit. Roman tells us, right? Yeah, but the Spirit. So, if you know all of that, and you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying in tongues, mm -hmm. what, the, what the Bible tells us when we're praying in tongues, um, you know that's in 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. That 14th chapter tells us all about that stuff about praying in tongues and all of that. Um, says in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man but to God. Amen. For no one understands him. Mm -hmm. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Amen. Hmm. Amen. And which verse is that? That was verse 2. First Corinthians, the 14th chapter, verse 2. As many times we do not know what And then it tells you in the fourth mm -hmm. verse, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it tells you all about speaking in tongues all the way through that chapter when you should speak in tongues and when you shouldn't speak in tongues. And all that type of stuff. It also tells you in the 14th verse of that 14th chapter, 
For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So you don't even know what you're saying. You don't. Because you're talking to God. You're praying in an unknown language. It may, it's unknown to you. It may be people around you, but somebody knows what it is that you're saying, right? Right. And the thing about that, when you're doing that, you definitely have faith in God because you don't know what the Spirit is saying, but you have faith in the Spirit of God. Well, you know, as, as well as I do, when you... Um, start speaking in tongues, you're speaking in, by faith. It's by faith. It's by faith that you're speaking in, in tongues because it, it'll come a point in time in your life that you are praying to God about something, which me and my family have been, been praying for our son. He was in an accident in February and he's still in a paralyzed state under all kinds of drugs and anesthesia, right? Right. You know, waiting on his lungs to get healed up enough so that he can breathe on his own. He's on a ventilator and, you know, all that type of stuff. Yes, and when you're looking at all this and you're hearing what the doctors and nurses are saying to you, you can't say what they're saying. You have to say what the Bible says, mm -hmm. by his stripes we were healed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you're praying for somebody, you're praying the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. You're not saying, not my will, but your will be done. You're praying that his will will be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not mm -hmm. doubting. Right. And this is what we're talking about. What you're saying, what the words are coming out of your mouth is very important. Very important. And when you look here in the Numbers, the 13th chapter, just, just how important this was, because it says here in Numbers, the 13th chapter, the first verse, it says, And the Lord mm -hmm. spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Cana, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Amen. So this is what God is saying Amen. to the children of Israel. Amen. So they went they went on in there and spied out the land and give you you know the list of people who went in there. Yes. And they checked it out. And here's what happened. When you get down here to the 31st verse, it says, But the men who had gone up with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and they have the children and they gave the children of israel a bad report mm -hmm. of the land which they had spied out saying the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Achan, came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes and so we were in their sight. So they came back with a bad report. And they were gone for 40 days. So when people give you a bad report, are you supposed to believe that bad report? No. When you go up to the 30th verse, it says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession 
for we are well able to overcome it. Now that's what two of them were saying. Right, right. They told but the rest of them gave an evil report. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to the 14th chapter, let's look at a verse here. <laughs> it says, praise the Lord. In the 8th verse, it says, If the Lord delighted in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. So which story do you believe? Are they able to go into the land and, and take it, or are they, they not? Well, when you read through the 13th and the 14th chapter, you see that they was ready to stone. It says um, in the 14th chapter, the first verse, it says, So all the people lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. That's weeping all night about a bad report. When we get a bad report, God don't want us to be weeping all night about it, especially when he told us that, look, I have heard your prayer. You have asked me to heal, in our case, our son. And don't you say nothing no different no more, no matter what you hear. That's right. And it says, And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, <laughs> that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their face before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun and uh, Caleb the son of Jephthah, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we possess passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in, in us, then we will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are bred. Their protection has departed from them. Amen. And the Lord is with us. Right. Do not fear them. Amen. This is important. You can't have no, when God has told you something. You're not supposed to be fearful. You can't bring no evil report in there. You can't That's be right. saying what somebody else is saying. And people will do this. They will. They'll, you'll tell them, um, you know, in our case, we're telling them our son is, uh, he's not getting any worse. He's once we prayed for he's him, once we saw him, and we prayed for him, we asked God to heal him, he stopped getting worse. Yes, he did. And every day we go down there, the process is that he's getting better every day mm -hmm. so do we post to say something different no we better not no We're speaking against the Lord because it tells us uh, count it all joy this let me just read this first because we talked about this before this is James the first chapter because a lot of people don't realize what they be talking what the words be coming out of their mouth in James, the first chapter, the second verse, he says, My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Amen. That's right. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Amen. Gotta be patient. But let patience have its perfect work, 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And you you got to see, you got to say what God is saying. Amen. And see, Joshua and Caleb was saying what God was saying, but the under ten were giving an evil report. Amen. And you know speaking the wrong thing. Just speaking everything against God, they will reject it. It says, God then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? That's right. That's what they you, were doing. you need Rejection. to ask yourself. Rejecting the How Lord long God are you see. going to be rejecting the Lord and what you're doing when he's telling you that in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. you can have everlasting life. Amen. That's being saved. Everlasting life is being saved. Mm -hmm. And that in Christ, you can have healing. Amen. In Christ, you can have joy. In Christ, you can have peace Amen. that passes all understanding. No matter what this circumstance You know, is. so how long are you going to reject the Lord? Amen. And listen to an evil report coming from people. Right. And what God's Bible is saying is true. Amen. It is true. It is true. What happened here? Time won't, you know, give us uh, to tell you everything that happened, but read the 13th and 14th chapter of this. And what God did, we're going to sum it up. Go to Hebrews, the third chapter. This is the summary of what happened there in uh, 15 and uh, 13 and 14 of Numbers. And Hebrews. The third chapter. At the seventh verse, it says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness. That's what he's talking. He's talking about that 13, 14 chapter back there. And numbers, okay? Where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw their works 40 years. That's what happened by them rejecting the Lord. They were running around in the wilderness 40 years. Right. It was one year for each day that they went to spy out the land. They spied out the land 40 days. Right. So the Lord gave them one year for each day. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they should not enter my rest. And then he tells us, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. Right? That's right. When you reject his word, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. They encourage one another. So it says, but extort one another daily, why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confession, our confidence, steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. As in the rebellion. Amen. For who having heard rebelled. This is what happened. They rebelled. Amen. Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry 40 years? For it was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. 
And to whom did he swear that they did not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? Mm -hmm. So we see then, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. This is what this is all things of God. I'm, I'm willing to trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whether you're trusting in God or you're not. Trusting in man, <laughs> but trusting in God. I have learned in my Christian walk to trust in God. Right. Man, I tell you. And you know, and don't go by what I see. No, it's a what you see is because they were going by what they were seeing. They mm -hmm. saw the giants and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, you, you know. See, this is what um, the scripture says that we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot in that message, right? And then it tells us here in Second uh, Corinthians, as we end this up. We're going to be going over this a lot. We're, we're probably going to stay here a minute or two. It tells us in um, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse, it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen. So he's saying, no matter how old you get, you better not lose heart. Amen. No, can't. <laughs> and then it says, For our light afflictions, mm -hmm. which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight and glory. Mm -hmm. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. That's important. You got to look at the things. You can't look at the things which are seen out here. Because you can't see everything. And you don't know everything. Especially if you're not walking in the light with Christ. Right. You, God, you, God, you God, don't know where you you don't know what you're saying. No, you don't, because of the deceitfulness of the So it says, For the things which are seen are temporary. That's right. That's one thing. Everything here on earth is temporary. temporary. This this is passes the cult. Matter of fact, they talk a lot about climate control and, and you know, uh, getting hotter and hotter. The scripture says that this earth is going to be destroyed by fire. Right. The heavens and the earth are going to pass away and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. It's going to melt. And this is why it's so important to get in Christ while you have a chance. You, you have to repent and believe the gospel. And then it says, um, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's things in which we haven't seen yet. Right. Uh, a new heaven and a new earth a, where it's, there's no sin. Right. There's no stealing, killing, and destroying. None of that. The devil is cast into the lake of fire. You're going to have a new body. Amen. Body. And plus you will have a glorified body. Right. The same body, similar to what Jesus, when he rose from the dead, Amen. had. It was a body that had flesh and bone. Yeah, because he was still eating. He was eating. Amen. <laughs> Fish and bread. He could eat. Right. He could go through walls with this body. He Nobody could transport could. himself from one place to another. Nobody could bound him. I mean... Either. God has got so much in store for us, and all these things that all you have to do is it's just trust. believe what my son has told you, and, do what I tell and you. that you have to repent and believe the gospel. Right. That's all you have to do while you're here on earth. Right. And when you when you do that here on earth, no matter what somebody is telling you, no matter, no matter what kind of bad report they're giving you, right. you're telling them God has healed them. They, they are healed. By his stripes they were healed. Well, it don't look good. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking at things which are seen. You That's see, not, you have to stand fast on what God has told you right. in your heart. And, and you have to stand fast and speak what he's told you in his word. 
and don't speak what the enemy is saying. You got to get that out of your mouth. Amen. Have a good afternoon. Praise God for his holy word. That's what I mean.